Hey everyone, it's Eric here from Netflix. I'm going to have a video for you guys today. Hope you guys are all doing well. It's a very nice spring day. It's almost May. We recently had our um, Cherry Blossom Festival here. If you guys know where we are located, we are actually right outside of Washington, D.C., not too far, in uh, Alexandria. And um, yeah, it usually gets around busy this time of year, especially if you guys are coming in. It's always really nice to see that stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, but man, the traffic can be horrendous. Instead of the Cherry Blossoms, we'll be seeing something else that's beautiful, and that will be one of these uh, M1 MacBooks that you guys send us for repair. I am a boxer. I appreciate a nice uh, electronics box, especially that shows that you guys really take care of your device. But unfortunately, things happen, like liquid spills and power rail problems, and uh, you know, so that's why we're here to help. So let's take a look. Let's see what's going on. Let's open this box. Oh, got a little mail and repair form. There, if you guys didn't uh, check it out, um, we take in mail-ins and we have all of our links in the description down below. So we have that out and then we have the nice um, unboxing. Please subscribe if you are, if you guys are interested in stuff like this because we do MacBook repairs, it's fun. If you wanna hear me rant about stuff, I have lots of my old videos where I rant a lot more than I do today, believe it or not. We have some liquid. You can kind of see a little bit of stains here along the heat sink. You can kind of see the shine of it too when I move it left uh, up and back here. You can see there's a little bit of corrosion that's close to where the LCD connection is. Uh, corrosion can be, usually be pretty obvious to tell if, if there is corrosion because it's usually like this greenish and it gets like a greenish white color. So let's go ahead and um, let's remove the board. Let's take a look at it a little bit closer. We'll go under the microscope and uh, go from there. So let's go over there to the microscope. Let's take a look at it and see really what's going on. We'll take our palm rest with us, the whole thing. Let's go ahead and take a look at the palm rest first. Let's take a look at the battery connection before we get into the, the logic board. So this looks to be a bit, a little bit corroded there, right? We don't want to just pull it out and remove it. Let's just go ahead and just dab it up. Just clean anything, just loosen it up just in case so, so it doesn't stick. Well, right? And then let's remove it because it doesn't look that bad though. Let's go ahead and pull it. Let's be careful. No, 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 no. Oh, it came out perfectly. Yay. We want this, this needs to be perfect because this matters about it working, right? It's, it looks like it's just discolored. It doesn't look actually burned. All the pins on both sides look to be okay too. So we're probably fine with this. Not too bad. Looks like just a slight clean. Not too bad itself. Oh, a little bit up here. It's just a little bit. That's where this is. This. this is actually a little bit burned there. So like we can't really scrape this off because it's already scraped off. This cable is actually very important. It connects the battery there to the logic board. On MacBooks, if you have usually even like a speck of dust or anything blocking that connection or getting in the way of that connection, you can get like a loud fan noise. You can get a battery not detected you can get a lot of different type of errors on that because MacBooks like batteries connected, especially on the more later ones with it because they have a little board here and that board is what communicates um, the battery to the main logic board there. If there is a burn on it, that means that's a very important connection, right? Because that's what's uh, communicating between the two. So we'll just go ahead and replace this because that's gonna need to be replaced. Um, we'll do that. If the battery has been impacted, we'll just replace the battery. Typically, if there is any type of liquid damage whatsoever, if it's usually on around the battery connection, we, we always want to be safe and just replace the battery, which we still might do for this one anyway. We'll test that later with another cable once we do finish the repair, but let's get right into the logic board. It doesn't look too bad. Um, we could probably swap this out because you could see one end is darker. We could replace this cap and uh, yeah, just clean it up. It's not too bad over there. Let's continue. Let's follow the, the crime scene. We'll go over here. And we could see the trail, the blood trail. And we could see it kind of leads over here. It's a little bit of corrosion around this area. This is usually pretty close to the backlight area. This one kind of got shoved in the corner. We can maybe just do like a reflow and put it through ultrasonic as well there too. Just close to where the LCD connection is. Power areas. Okay, so the back looks very clean. So we'll focus on the front.
Now, we don't like this, it's not good enough because it can get underneath. Let's go ahead and remove this one too. And we'll check the other side to make sure. Oh, back to another one. Put this up. Hey, go back. There you go, go back home. Go back home. Our pads look good. Not too bad. But you always want to check, right? And the chip looks good too. When you do the flux anyway in the hot air, it, it usually cleans it anyway. But uh, we want to make sure nothing's burned. Everything looks good. Okay. All right, so we saved the best for last. So I removed uh, the LCD connection because of look how bad that is and obviously we'll burn it if we do it that close. So this one's actually removable. We see the pins look fine. That's one side and here's the other side. Yeah, so everything looks to be fine. Some of these are for LCD backlight and some of these are for, for LCD switch. So just make sure that um, your LCD is properly getting power on and you get a nice data line going on there. First, we'll just dabble here. Oh, this doesn't look too bad. Oh, this one's a little bit burned on the side here. It's a little bit, yeah, this one's a little bit charred up. These don't look too bad, more surface than anything else. They're not actually really burned. This one's burned. So we're gonna replace this one and then we'll go ahead and replace uh, that one because that one you can't really see the end. Usually when you get a liquid damage, if it covers like the whole thing and you can't see one of the ends, if one end gets burned, the other one doesn't, usually it means it's like a ground. So one side is your line and then the other side is ground. Let's take them out. And actually we'll put flux here so we clean this whole area, or just in general. Okay, this be removed. Get in there. Yep, just fuse right in there. There we go. It's like a Goten and Trunks fusion. There we go. Oh man, look at that. It looks like brand new. It's a little sticky dot. We got a fixed board. Let's go ahead and install it and test it. Check the ports. The ports look good too. So, the 20 volts. Okay, it's climbing. Let's see if it turns on. Oh, oh, it was already on. <laughs> okay, and we got to the OS. I hope you guys are watching this M1 MacBook Pro with liquid damage repair. Um, if you guys are interested in doing a MacBook uh, liquid spill repair or any type of MacBook liquid spill with data recovery, we have all of our contact links in the description below if you're interested in mailing it in. If you guys are local to the Washington DC area or the DMV metro area, or even in Alexandria, Virginia, you can just come on by. Hope you guys enjoyed watching and see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Bye.